SpaceX Starship has just come back to the pad for another historic Flight 8. This will not only be a more proper debut of Starship Block 2, but it will also introduce a host of new technologies with new insane goals. And the best part? A detailed plan for this flight has just been unveiled. There's a lot to unpack, so let's dive into it one by one in today's episode. On this eighth flight, SpaceX introduced a series of new upgrades to both the upper and lower stages of Starship. First is the thing everyone wants to know about, Ship 34. Ship 34 is the second Block 2 of the Starship. It is the second generation design of SpaceX's Starship Upper Stage, part of the fully reusable Starship launch system. This version introduces several upgrades over its predecessor, Block 1, aimed at improving performance, reliability, and reusability. In the upcoming test flight, Ship 34 boasts several hardware and operational upgrades that promise a level of performance never seen before. The focus has been on enhancing reliability and performance throughout all phases of flight. To improve aerodynamics and reduce stress during re-entry, Starship's forward flaps have been shifted slightly to the leeward side. One of the key concerns during re-entry is the thermal stress on the vehicle. To address this, the Starship V2 forward flaps feature upgraded heat shielding, designed to withstand the extreme temperatures encountered during atmospheric re-entry. To further shield the ship from the intense heat of re-entry, Starship will feature the latest generation of heat tiles, now including a backup layer to guard against potential damage or loss. However, for Flight 8, a significant number of tiles have been removed to stress test vulnerable areas across the vehicle. Multiple metallic tile options, including one with active cooling, will be tested as alternative materials for re-entry protection. These metal shields represent SpaceX's effort to develop a new heat shield, aimed at replacing the current ceramic tiles in their pursuit of full reusability. Non-structural versions have been installed on the sides of the vehicle, to test the thermal performance of Starship's catch fittings. Additionally, a section of the tile line has been given a smoothed, tapered edge to address hot spots observed during re-entry on Starship's sixth flight test. The re-entry profile is intentionally designed to push the structural limits of the upper stage's rear flaps at the point of maximum entry dynamic pressure. Now, if you have known SpaceX for a long time, there is always one thing that they want to improve for their vehicles, and that is the propulsion. For Flight 8, the propulsion system underwent a complete redesign, featuring a 25% increase in propellant volume compared to previous generations, vacuum-jacketed feed lines, and a redesigned fuel feed system optimized specifically for the Raptor vacuum engines. The extended propellant tanks boost capacity by approximately 300 tons, bringing the total to around 1,500 tons for the ship. This increase enhances the payload capacity to about 150 metric tons to low Earth orbit when fully reusable. However, this comes with a trade-off. The payload bay volume decreases from around 860 cubic meters in Block 1 to roughly 590 to 600 cubic meters. For SpaceX, this is a strategic trade-off as the increased tank capacity significantly enhances the vehicle's performance. Not only does it enable Starship to undertake longer duration missions, but it also conserves fuel for a controlled landing, critical for later attempts to catch the ship with Mechazilla. Another area of the ship that received a complete redesign is the avionics system, which now includes enhanced capabilities and redundancy to support increasingly complex missions such as propellant transfer and the return of the ship to the launch site. One question on many people's minds is whether SpaceX has identified and resolved the root cause of the Starship explosion on Flight 7. The answer is yes, they have. During Flight 7, a flash near one of the Raptor vacuum engines was observed after separation, followed by another flash and sustained fires in the attic. This led to the shutdown of all but one engine and a loss of communication with the ship before any destructive rules were triggered. The vehicle was seen breaking apart roughly three minutes after losing contact during descent. After further investigation, 
they discovered that the primary cause of the ship's loss was determined to be a harmonic resonance that was significantly stronger during flight than what had been observed in testing. This intense resonance placed excessive stress on the propulsion system's hardware, leading to propellant leaks. These leaks overwhelmed the ship's attic area venting capacity, ultimately resulting in sustained fires. As part of the ongoing investigation, an extended duration static fire test was conducted with the Starship during its eighth flight test. The 60-second firing was designed to evaluate multiple engine thrust levels and test three distinct hardware configurations in the Raptor vacuum engine feed lines with the goal of recreating and addressing the harmonic response observed during Flight 7. The results of this static fire informed several key hardware modifications, including improvements to the fuel feed lines for the vacuum engines, adjustments to propellant temperatures, and the establishment of a new target thrust level for the upcoming flight test. In addition, to mitigate potential flammability risks in the attic section of Starship, new vents, and a nitrogen purge system are being incorporated into the current generation of vehicles. These upgrades are intended to enhance the robustness of the area against propellant leakage, ensuring improved safety and performance. SpaceX also noted that future upgrades to Starship will incorporate the Raptor 3 engine, which will reduce the attic volume and eliminate most joints that could potentially leak into this space. With these improvements in place, we can expect that on the 28th of this month, S-34 will avoid the issues encountered during the previous flight, showcasing the true capabilities of Starship Block 2. And what about the booster? Has it received any upgrades? Of course, the Super Heavy booster for this flight comes with upgraded avionics, including a more powerful flight computer, enhanced power and network distribution, and integrated smart batteries. Finally, several radar sensors will be tested once again on the launch and catch towers chopsticks, aiming to improve the accuracy of distance measurements between the chopsticks and a returning vehicle. And you know, if Friday's Starship launch proceeds as planned, SpaceX could attempt the first ever ship and booster catch as soon as Flight 9. This groundbreaking achievement would mark the debut of the first fully reusable orbital rocket paving the way for a new era of spaceflight and bringing humanity closer to establishing a permanent, sustainable presence beyond Earth's orbit. Not only did SpaceX provide a precise time for the flight, but as a treat for Starship fans, they also revealed a detailed breakdown of the ship's upgrades, along with a comprehensive plan outlining what will be showcased during the flight. This flight isn't just about correcting what couldn't be achieved on the previous mission. It's also paving the way for Starship's future. Although not caught by Mechazilla, S-34 will conduct several experiments aimed at enabling the Starship upper stage to return to the launch site. Additionally, during the test, Starship will deploy four Starlink simulators, designed to match the size of next-generation Starlink satellites, marking the first step in satellite deployment missions. Currently, both Booster 15 and Ship 34 are on their way to the launch pad just two days away from their historic day. The launch window will open at 5.30 p.m. For those who can't make it to Texas, a live webcast of the flight test will start about 40 minutes before liftoff, and you can catch it on X at SpaceX. If you're as excited as I am for this historic event, drop a let's go in the comments. So here's how Flight 8 will unfold. On launch day, first, the ship will undergo propellant loading. Once both Starship and Super Heavy have completed their propellant loads, the SpaceX flight director will verify a go for launch. Approximately 20 seconds later, the flame deflector will activate, followed by the start of the Raptor ignition sequence. With the immense power of 33 Raptor 2 engines, Starship will reach max Q its point of maximum aerodynamic stress, just one minute and two seconds into the flight. At two minutes and 40 seconds into the flight, Starship will initiate hot staging, separating the upper stage from its booster. This process will occur rapidly, after which the booster B-15 will conduct a boost back burn to adjust its trajectory for a return to the launch site. 
In this process, several critical vehicle and pad criteria must be met before the Super Heavy booster can be safely returned and caught. This includes ensuring the booster and tower systems are functioning properly, along with a final manual command from the mission's flight director. If this command is not issued before the completion of the boost back burn, or if automated health checks indicate any issues with the booster or tower, the booster will default to a trajectory for a soft splashdown in the Gulf of Mexico. If everything checks out, the super heavy landing burn will commence, with the engines throttling up as needed to shed velocity. Timing is crucial. If it happens too early, it wastes fuel. Too late, the booster risks crashing. SpaceX ensures precision with real-time telemetry and onboard computers, perfectly executing the landing burn. As the returning booster slows from supersonic speeds, it will generate audible sonic booms in the area around the landing zone. Typically, the only impact on those nearby is a brief thunder-like noise, with factors such as weather conditions and distance from the landing site influencing the intensity of the sonic boom experienced by observers. At the final stage of the process, the last Raptor engine on Booster 15 will shut down and it will be sandwiched between Mechazilla's giant metal chopsticks. After the booster successfully lands, the mission is far from over. Ship 34 still has its role to play. At 8 minutes and 44 seconds into the flight, Starship will initiate engine cutoff. Then, approximately 9 minutes later, it will deploy four Starlink simulators. These simulators will follow the same suborbital trajectory as Starship and are expected to burn up upon re-entry. Starship will perform one more Raptor engine relight test in space before re-entry back to Earth. This capability is especially important for missions involving in-orbit refueling or journeys to distant destinations like the Moon, where exact control over the descent is crucial. Next comes the re-entry process. Starship enters the atmosphere at an altitude of around 100 to 120 kilometers traveling at incredible speeds. Unlike traditional capsules, it doesn't re-enter nose first. Instead, it flips to a belly flop position with its heat shield facing down. This maneuver maximizes drag and distributes the heat load across its stainless steel belly, which is covered in thousands of ceramic heat tiles. At around one to two kilometers above the ground, Starship performs its most dramatic maneuver. It flips from horizontal to vertical. The flaps guide the transition and then the Raptor engines ignite for the landing burn. This all happens incredibly fast, within seconds, driven by precise timing and radar altimetry. The Raptor engines throttle dynamically, slowing Starship from several hundred meters per second to almost zero, ensuring a successful splashdown in the ocean. And as SpaceX said, excitement guaranteed.